That's flashing, U4. That's our outdoor over there. This is what we're gonna use. We'll have a look at some of these demisters. Yeah, it looks like it's got a tad warm. Right then, this controller here, as you can see there, that's flashing and it is flashing the error code U4. The U4 fault at saying there's a problem with one of the thermistors on the outdoor unit, so. There is actually a way of finding out which thermistor's faulty from this controller. So if you've got a PAR controller, so you'll see there, this one's a PAR 31. If you reset the fault and then go into that menu button there, if you scroll down and go into service, hit the tick, put your password in there, just go down to check, hit the tick, request code, hit the tick again and make sure you've got the addressing of the faulty unit and then request code 106. So. 106 and then we're going to hit the tick button and hopefully that's going to come back and tell us which the mister's faulty there we go look so that's telling us that the mister 8 so i'm guessing that's th8 that's our faulty the mister so we're going to have a look outside and we'll have a look at th8 That's our outdoor over there. So I'll whip the cover off um, and we'll go and have a look, see what we can find. We've whipped that cover off. Um, now, obviously the thermistor, it's told us that it's faulty, it's TH8. So if we have a look up here, you'll see there, TH4, TH3, TH6, TH7 and uh, there you'll see three, four, five, six, seven, but no eight. All right. Now that's because TH8 or thermistor 8 is actually the thermistor that detects the heat sink temperature of the power board. Um, and that is the only thermistor that you can't test. So I can't actually check that, but uh, I'm just got to assume that 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 thermistor that power board in the heat sink is faulty so unfortunately you just have to change the whole power board but it's probably wise um, just to check the resistance of the compressor um, perhaps any of the other components on here so what we'll do um, I'll grab the insulation resistance tester and this is where I keep my insulation resistance tester so this is what we're going to use um, so we'll check the check the insulation resistance of this compressor and then what I'll do just to show you we'll uh, we'll unplug these thermistors here that should be working and we'll just test the resistance we got them disconnected so we'll get the tester set up and then we'll see what readings we get Right then, we'll check these windings now. So, this is our first one. And that one seems all right. Move over to the next one. Again, that one seems all right. Over to the last one. That one's all right as well. So the compressor windings check out. So what I'll do now, I'll just unplug some thermistors and I'll show you how I test them. So this is the tester I'm going to use. This one's the Testo uh, 770-1. So this reads super low resistance, so we'll get this hooked up and then we'll have a look at some of these thermistors.
Right then, so as you can see there, look, 7.83 kilo ohms. So I'll show you now on the Mitsubishi app um, what, what these are supposed to be. That's the high resistance, oh, sorry, the low resistance that these testos can measure. So that's why I use this particular clamp meter. I'll show you now with this thing here. So this is just a basic fluke meter, but I'll just show you that this thing can't read those resistances. Right, there you go, look. So this meter will not read the low resistance like the fluke meter does. So um, just something to bear in mind if you're testing canisters and stuff on air conditioning units like me, you might want to invest in um, a better meter than this uh, if you are doing that job. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to check the rest of these here. Um, I'll show you the readings and then we'll plug them back in. But I think it's safe to say that the power board on this one is changing because obviously it's the Mr. 8. That's our problem for Mr. I'm going to leave this one off and obviously I'm going to recommend a new power board for this one so if they give the go ahead I'll bring you guys back. Right then a little bit of bonus footage I've been on holiday for a week and in the meantime they gave us the order to repair this so we've ordered a power board that's turned up. Got some tools so we'll uh, we'll get this thing fitted Once you've got the two screws out, you're going to want to take this board, unplug all this stuff and get it out of the way so we can get to, you can see that those boards behind the back. So I'm going to unplug this now and then we'll just pull that out of the way. There you go, so that's the control board taken away and then beyond there you'll see a noise filter board and right at the back there it's our power board we want to change so um, we'll have a look at moving this noise filter board out of the way next. So you're going to want to remove any plugs from this noise filter board and then them little tabs as you can see, them little tabs just up there, I think there's eight of them. So you want to pull all them off and then get that noise filter board out of the way as well. Right then, that's finally undone. I don't know why they make it so tight, but it can be a real pain to get them tabs undone. So you've got to move all this stuff out of the way. Um, slide this board out and then we'll have a look at getting that power board out behind right then next up we've got a screw over there and a screw down there so we'll get this plate off and then that's going to give us access to that power board behind there plates out of the way so we've just got to get everything off there get that board out get the new one in get it all plugged back in and then reverse procedure put it all back together For me now, this is where just take an extra few minutes and check that you've got everything plugged in. 
so there's no plugs left or there's no spades left with nothing plugged in because it's easily done um, you can get leads sort of caught behind the board or you, can, you know it happens to all of us you just accidentally miss something but some of these are putting a lot of voltage down so you don't want them hanging around so just take an extra minute just go over everything make sure that there's nothing that you haven't forgot to plug in do that with each board and then you should be all right maybe you can see but down there look there's a tiny little red plug now you've got absolutely no chance of getting your fingers in there unless you've got massively long skinny fingers so this is what i use these are the multi ergo long nose pliers um, they're from nws bang on for doing pcb changes you can just go straight in whip all your plugs out um, yeah i'll be lost without these to be fair so worth checking out if you haven't seen these before i'm pretty sure that's everything back in so all three of them boards back in obviously we've replaced the power board so i'm just going to put the covers back on um, go inside i'll switch it on then i'll come back out and hopefully that's this one put to bed completely forgot to mention at the beginning but yeah make sure you get yourself a lock off kit and uh, lock off the isolator when you're working on this stuff because you never do know right then there we go that's going to show us what our heat sink temperature is now so that looks all right so yeah i'll meet you guys back outside that one's back up and running i've stayed with it for a bit i've stayed with it for a bit longer just to make sure everything's all right but that one looks good um this is the old board so if we have a look at the back of that it does look like there's some signs of heat damage um, yeah it looks like it's got a tad warm but it's not the first one of these i've changed to be fair i've changed a couple on these um on these mr slim units so you do get, I forgot to mention, but you do get a full instruction from start to finish on how to do this with a little diagram. Um, so, you know, it's not that hard if you just follow the instructions, to be fair. Uh, but yeah, I'm calling that one good. Ow.